Hey, welcome back. Thank you for joining us for part two of this uh, build. So what I did was I cut off the sections of the other half of that lawnmower blade that I was not going to use. So this center piece that had the holes and then that piece right there that had the uh, mulching part of the blade and then this section right here. So what I did was I just simply made a bar stock out of this area right here. And this is what we're going to be using to forge. So let's get to it. Okay, I'm out here at my forge. I've got it prepped, heated up. I've got my quenching oil sitting next to my forge so it heats up. I found using uh, used motor oil to quench uh, lawnmower blades works best for me. You might find something else that works better for you, um, but this is what I use. I got my anvil over here. I've got my hammers that I'm needing and then my tools. And so now, uh, basically what I'm going to do is just forge out the steel. Um, I am not an expert by any means. I am very novice at forging. Uh, so, uh, no need for criticism. I'm just showing you how I make blades using lawnmower uh, metal. So, let's get to it. Alrighty folks, well obviously there is a huge difference between the two knives, this one being forged and this one being the stock removal. Um, don't think one is better than the other because you know this knife is bigger, this knife is smaller. It's all by my choice that they are how they are. So um, as you saw in the video that I took the opportunity to heat this one up and quench it. So now this one is hardened and then this one is not hardened. Um, but I went and I forged it out and I, I don't know if you can tell but I forged in the bevels while I was there 
And if you noticed earlier, this tip here kind of had like a V shape on the, the very front of it. That's what they call fish mouthing, but that kind of worked itself out when I was forging in the bevel. And then, uh, of course, forged the handle and this uh, area right here. I think they call it the Ricasso. And uh, it doesn't have to be absolutely pretty right now because there is going to be a lot of sanding and grinding work going on with this to uh, make it look better. <clears throat> and, you know, it's kind of beefy right now. It's got a lot of, a lot of uh, material to it, which is good because when you're grinding, you remove a lot of the material. Um, there's kind of a lip right here that I got to grind out and uh, basically uh, finesse this thing. So that's the forge knife. There's the stock removal knife. So uh, I'm not going to I am not going to temper this knife now. I'm going to temper them both together. And so, um, let's get to grinding this one and getting it shaped. Hands, eyes, ears. All right, this is my modified 4x36 Harbor Freight belt sander. And what I'm going to do is basically straighten out that handle. I don't know if you see it, but the, I want to make everything straight. So when I put a handle on it, I've got very little troubles to deal with. And then I'm debating about cleaning up up here. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. Almost forgot. Eyes, hands, and ears. All right, so I worked in this bevels as much as I could on both sides. Yeah, it's getting late. Time to call it quits. But I'll finish this again tomorrow morning. Well, we'll start finishing up tomorrow morning. Uh, heat treat, quench, temper, and then handle. Okay, welcome back to part two. So I've sanded this uh, forged blade out clean. Uh, put some bevels in it, hand bevels. And now I need to harden the blade and then temper. So let's get over to the forge and harden this sucker. Okay, 
so apparently I lost the footage of the heating process because my phone was too close and it overheated and it stopped recording so the process basically went like this had it in my forged heated up into my forge until it was cherry hot non-magnetic came over here touched it to the magnet here to make sure that it was non-magnetic it wouldn't stick to the magnet and then went down into the uh, oil quench this is preheated used motor oil I like to use that for my lawnmower blades it works best for me what works for you could be something different after that I brought it all the way over here to my vise stuck it in my vise while it was still relatively warm crimped it in there to make sure that there would be no warps everything was straight and by now it should be cool enough to touch obviously and so now let's remove it out of its cartouche just kidding out of the vise I really like to crank it down too and make sure this sucker stays straight and still don't know how hot it is so I ain't trusting it we got ourselves a hardened blade now in this stage they say and I have fact that it is is in a very hardened brittle stage what could happen is if you were to drop this on a hard surface it could break I know this for a fact because I've done it once and then I've also put them in my vise and I saw like a small bend in the handle and I stuck it in my vise to try to bend it while it was in this hardened stage and that sucker just snapped so next thing we have to do is temper this Tempering basically is you heat it up to a certain degree to soften the metal just a little bit so it's not so brittle. And I've got two other blades that I need to put into the tempering oven with it. So let's do that. Here's my tempering oven. It's just a Farberware toaster oven. And here are the three blades I need to temper right now. This is the forge blade. This is our stock removal blade, and this is something I had to rework all over again. So I've got to temper that knife again. So now that it's on, I'm going to toss these inside and leave them there for about an hour and a half. Come back and go from there. All right, y'all, it's that time. <clears throat> Let's get them out of here. They're still fairly hot, but now they're in the tempered stage, so they're not so brittle. I'll let them sit out here for a minute. <clears throat> let them cool so they can be touched. Uh, sand, them, sand it down. Get them clean. Then sharpen. All right, so here I've got my knife set on my filing jig. Uh, and normal people, after they finish hardening and tempering their knives, they go back and clean them up, and then they start doing the bevels on them. Me, I don't. Reason why is it's dark. Um, I don't have to mark it again with marker or anything like that, and I can see my grinds a lot clearly when I start. So... <clears throat> And I've already set the line where I want the distance. Well, I can't really do this with one hand. But if I just get a little bit. Uh, you can see where now the metal is starting to show through. I can judge and clearly see how far up my grinds are going. 
So I'm going to be doing that for a while. And then I'll come back and show you what that looks like after. Okay, everybody. After about five minutes of filing, you can clearly see how uneven my bevel is when I did it by hand. But that's okay, because we're fixing it with file work. But I just want to stop and take a moment and show you the process. Okay, so I've got about eh, maybe 20 minutes of good filing working. And as you can see, I got a clear indication of where my bevel lines are on the knife. So sanding it before doing your bevels it just saves you a step of having to mark it with a marker or paint or whatever. But uh, I've still got quite a ways to go. There's still quite a bit of beef on this knife here. And I continue. Okay, I got into about another 20 minutes of file work on the other side. And I realized that my Ricasso line on this side and on this side is a little bit off, plus the angle of my edge bevel is a little bit more I got more bevel here than I do here so I gotta correct that I think it's because I changed my file I went from a uh, mill file with a smoother cut to another uh, file with a double cut and this file's a little bit thicker. But that's okay, I still got some beef to go. So I'm gonna come back to this side, fix that bevel difference, and then fix that Ricasso area right there. But you see how it's coming along. Now that I've got my bevels worked in from all that from the filing jig. I'm going to take it to my belt sounder now and clean up the rest of the blackness on this knife and see how clean my bevel lines are. Hands, eyes, ears. helps if I plug it in so I wanted to finish up this uh, video um, as quickly as possible uh, it's been a couple weeks before I came back I'm trying to pick up where I left off on these knives but uh, what I've done was is I've uh, put the edge on both of them and I've cleaned them up a little bit and so uh, without further ado here are the knives this is the uh, forge knife need some cleaning up more and this is the stock removal knife. They're not super sharp right now. I, I don't really even know how sharp they are right now. Um, I'm not even going to try testing them. But I just wanted to show that you can make decent quality knives from a lawnmower blade using both processes, both stock removal and forging. I really appreciate your patience and watching. May God bless you.